Uh, what's up? My name is Matt Taro. I am here with my co-founder, co-host, and... Uh, oh, my name is Brandon A. Denson. There he is. And we are the Snack Kings, and we have labeled ourselves as the Kings of Snack. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. We just made it up, so bear with us. Uh, we we kind of just started talking a little bit about like what you define as a snack, and then ultimately, like I think first, maybe what we would define as a meal. So what do you define as a meal? And then if it's not a meal, is it a snack? What do you define as a meal? I define a meal as like sitting down and having like a full meal. And that could be, you know, um, I would say like your servings of vegetables and starches and carbs or whatever it is that you're eating, like a full meal, like portioned out. You know, versus a snack being, you know, something that you're kind of just doing in between like meals, whether it's in between breakfast and lunch or between lunch and dinner, you know. But you've had meals that don't consist of all the food groups. Probably more times than it should be. <laughs> so basically a meal to you and maybe a lot of people would be any, and it doesn't have to do with time, what time you eat it. It doesn't necessarily have to do with who you eat it with or where you eat it. But most importantly, it's the con like the contents of what you're eating. So if what you are eating has different groups of nutrients or food uh, nutrients, then it would be considered a meal. So it's got fats, it's got starch, uh, it's got leafy greens and protein and maybe like a dash of sugar. So it's pretty diverse. Diverse. A, di a diversity plate of servings. And then what's a snack to you? Anything. That's not a meal? <laughs> Anything that's not a meal. You know, it could, I mean, it could be a piece of fruit. That could be a snack, right? That's but that's still a good, you know, that's a good snack, though. That's a great snack. But sometimes the snacking could be maybe you want a bagel uh, as a snack. Maybe you want, you know, cheese as a snack or yogurt or, you know, um, almonds or pecans or peanuts or. So it looks different to everybody because yeah. I, I would say that there's a lot of people out there that consider the word breakfast as a defining meal. Yep. And then you say, what did you have for breakfast? And they're like, oh, I had yogurt and a coffee. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's a meal. Well, technically that's a snack. It's a snack. It's a snack. It's definitely so a snack. So you, you should have eaten more than that. But, mm, yeah, I think that's where it can get a little bit challenging and confusing because, like, dealing with diabetes, you deal with it a certain way. So far as eating is different, and I think it's based on, you know, how you, what you know, um, far as how to maybe fuel yourself or, or eat properly, is based on kind of like the information and knowledge that that you actually have, you know, of. Uh, of eating properly or eating the right size portions. Um, like you said, I don't think timing has a lot to do with it. I think it's just as long as you're getting the right stuff. Well, I, and I think, I think I, maybe I was wrong about the timing because people consider there to be how many meals a day, how many meals, if I said how many meals typically would somebody be having to be, sustained throughout the day as far as nutrients like sustainable intake throughout the day like how many meals would you say most people are going to eat or look to eat i would say three three ding, three. ding, 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 ding. Three. great answer so if that's the case and most people are thinking about meals as three times a day but you're eating like as a diabetic like up like how many times a day do we eat yeah lot we're like way, we're like grazing way yeah way more than three yeah i think a lot of people are probably going to find themselves in that boat where they eat more times than that throughout the day so then ultimately no one's making anybody define something as one or another but i think we are 
And I would like to say that a meal is what we've just find, defined as something that's got nutritional value. Yeah. It's got different elements and, and nutrients in it. That was what makes up a meal. It's also something that I know is like a bridge in between one meal to the next. Like if I can get from my, my morning meal yep. to my afternoon meal, that's really good if I don't have to have a snack in between. Anything in between. But what are the chances of that happening? Like 3,000%. <laughs> oh, you mean of me not eating something? Yeah. Oh, zero. <laughs> I'm on the same page. Yeah, though. so if, I, if I'm like, oh, after breakfast – which is the morning meal, we'll call it. I'm like, oh, after breakfast, I'm not going to eat anything until, you know, 1 o'clock. So I eat breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning. And then I go, catch me at 1 p.m. Yeah. I'm going to have my afternoon meal. And then I'll see you around 7 o'clock at night for my evening meal. No chance. There's something definitely in between there. Definitely in between there. So there's a difference then between a correction for somebody who lives with diabetes mm. and a snack. Very true. Because you ha- you have to you have to at that point if you have to raise your blood sugar, whether it's like with candy or it's with juice or it's with um, fruit, fruits. <laughs> See, I just went to the extreme. I candy. Went, I went to the I went to the 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 likable things versus like the healthy. The healthier options. Um, the likable stuff, man. That's what, like, when I think about snack, like snacking, like, that's what I think of. Like, I have memories of just snacking on whatever I had my hands on. Like, I was busy. I'd go to my cupboard. I'd be like, oh, I've got crackers and cheese. Yeah. Like, that's snack. But, like, this is so weird. It's not necessarily off topic, but, like, it's so weird. I wish... This is going to sound really strange, but I've thought about this. Tell me if you've ever felt this way. I wish that there was a way that if I, let's say cookies, okay? Mm, 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 mm. I don't even care what kind it is. Just anything that looks, feels, smells, tastes like a cookie. If I wanted to get a cookie from the store and the serving size is one cookie, let's say it's two cookies. Let's be generous. The serving size is two cookies. That's like Oreos. And I buy, yeah, right. <laughs> and I buy something that has ten cookies in it. Right? So there's five servings in this. That means that if I buy it on Monday, that I should finish that no sooner than Friday. Cause it's a cookie a day. I wish there was something that would not allow me to eat more than two cookies in the day. Like, I wish that they were, like, locked up. Like, I wish that the package I got from the manufacturer would, like, on Monday, like, the first one would, like, pop open. You know, like, some, like, futuristic type, like, oh, my my, my cookies are open today. Like some back to the future. Yeah, so and then on Tuesday, the second one would open. And let's say it only opens at, like, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Like, you don't need to be eating cookies before that in the day. Do I want to? Yeah, I would wake up and have my morning meal be cookies. It's not nutritional. Cookies and coffee. But that fantastic, bro. What are we in England? Mushroom coffee. So yeah. So like I that sounds ridiculous. Goldfish. Oh man. Twenty goldfish is a serving. That's not real. Don't that's not we're not that's fake. Now I'm thinking about eating goldfish. But if I, if I went to, yeah, we are not trained medical professionals. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Disclaimer. Probably very important for us to state that. Goldfish. You can get a box of goldfish, bro. That's like, that's the size of your head. Like the Costco, go to Costco. Costco, yeah. Ralph's. Yeah. P- part of me feels like that's what's killing America. Well, yeah, that's, and a, it, that's a strong statement, but like that's but it's real. Let's just be honest. It's real. You know, I could go there and buy 10 of those. Yeah. And eat one of those every, every day, single day. The whole box. And, and you know, like like you said, like it's killing it's killing America. It's killing people around the world. 
and you know, I think sometimes it's it's based on, you know, it comes back to the knowledge and the education on on, what, on what's what. But then it also, you know, not to not to only put it on you know others. We have to put it on ourselves too, as far as having the discipline. But I think if you know what you you know if you know what the consequences are, then you look at it a little bit differently. Right? I think some people don't look at the consequences until they have to face them. So complications or, yeah. Which is true. There is nobody. Here's another thing. I'm talking about my, my futuristic, like, Tuesday afternoon, I want some goldfish. And my little goldfish packet's like, you haven't had any goldfish in 24 hours. Ding. And it opens up and it's like, you can now have 20 goldfish. If, bro, I I would want some kind of, like, regulation at the grocery store. I've thought about it like this. If I'm living with diabetes and I go into the store and I want to buy stuff, like, I almost want to have my stuff approved before I walk out of the store. Like, I wish somebody was there checking me. It almost, it almost, it almost should be, you're absolutely correct. It should be some type of um, procedure, but also, you know, if you're, you know, if like you're obese or, you know, overweight or have chronic conditions or, there should be some type of guidelines that are handed down, I think, from a government standpoint, in that you have to check certain boxes when you're purchasing stuff. Should it, I mean, it should be, right? Uh, it would have to be like a special grocery store that I could go into and that when I went in, I swipe my card at the front and it registers me as somebody living with diabetes. And then I go to put stuff in my cart and it's like, Access you know, denied. Access denied. <laughs> That's crazy. That basically is me saying that I don't have self-control, but it also means that the ability to go into a store and buy whatever you want, there is no limit other than the, the money that you have in your pocket, in your bank account. Yeah. Like if I have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in my bank account and I want to go into Kroger and buy every last piece of sugar that they have. It's like you can. I can do it. You can... Uh, excuse me, sir. Can you help me carry this to my car? Guy who works is like, hell yeah, I can. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's 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 crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and I think it comes from, you know, back to ultimately having the discipline or being showed, you know, shown what's, you know, what, what you should do and ultimately what you can do. I think we all know that we can just go from what to go buy you know, a hundred gallons of ice cream, we can do it, you know, but, but why is there no limit on what you, what you actually can purchase understanding the, um, the problems that can come along with that? You know, I think, I think you hit it on the head. Like there has to be something, some guidelines, some type of regulations, um, set in place for, you know, um, when you're purchasing stuff that won't allow you to go over that threshold, so, on the opposite side of the food that you take in, for someone like ourselves who live with diabetes, what is regulated? Insulin. Insulin. But... There's regulation on something to keep me alive, but there's no regulation on something that can kill me. Right. Which don't get that twisted because insulin could kill you too if you take too much. Right. And it can kill you if you don't have enough. But as it relates to food, there's no regulation on something that you can go purchase and buy that can ultimately kill you. There's also a regulation on how often or how many or what you can get as far as the tool to help you live your life. True. So an insulin pump. Yep. So not only is insulin regulated very heavily, but, but the, the device, but the device, the device is the tools that can actually help you live, help you live longer. And it's not saying that only if you use an insulin pump or you use a CGM, that's the only way, because there are a lot of pioneers in the, in the diabetes community that have, that have had huge amounts of success and, you know, that's kudos to them. But we live in a different age now to where we have access to these things. But not everybody has access to these things. 
Route, no one's coming to check how many forks I have in my, my drawer. No. That's a tool to sure. use to eat my food. For sure. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I can eat with my hands. I've done it plenty of times. Especially after washing them. Please wash your hands. But like... I mean, you don't eat pizza with a fork. You eat it with your hands. But you can eat pizza with a fork. Yeah, go on. Do whatever it is that you feel like doing, people who are listening. You want to eat pizza with a fork? Go on. Knock yourself out. Uh, Jada Kiss just did it the other day. So, But please also... <laughs> I would prefer that we are no longer friends. <laughs> Jada Kiss is cool. You want to be friends. Jada, we just holler. I feel like, though, it's, it's really important. Like, there is no, I, depending on your religious background, pretending on depending on what you look at, I feel like there's this line between, like, what are the seven deadly sins? And one of them being gluttony. Mm. and that's something that I mean I've personally dealt with issues of overeating and stress eating and so that's something I think is really important and it's really hard for me to talk about because as a male in his 30s who has an issue with his body image that's something that like I did no one did that to me yeah no one showed up and was like yo you should probably eat that whole sleeve of Oreos yeah I was like oh okay it was a little bit easier for me to do something like that when I used to use a substance like marijuana. Yeah. Because I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the munchies. Munchie, munchies, munchies. But because that's the type of situation that a lot of people find themselves in, you work an eight-hour day, you commute home, you are stressed about your job and your personal life, and maybe you use something like marijuana or alcohol to subsidize those feelings. So now you're in a position where you are feeling like you want to eat and it is promoted by the fact that you are under the influence. Yeah. So now you're eating and then there's no one like, trust me, like this is a slippery slope here, right? Like no one's going to show up at your house and be like, yo, if you get high, like you can only eat those two cookies. Negative. That You might as well not eat any cookies. You might not even want to know what cookies are like but you're gonna find and, and seek out stuff at that point like you could eat like a a lot and i think that you know since we're going down this slope i'll be you know i'll be the first to admit that i think i have um at times you know eating eating issues you know i there's a there's a card on my fridge um from a woman i ran into when I was leaving one of my doctor's appointments in Los Angeles and I never reached out to her, but that card has been on my fridge for some time. I may have to use it. And it was, it was about people living like people who have chronic illnesses, or maybe about diabetes who have eating disorders. And, and that's not easy to talk about because it's like, that's the type of thing where you're like, Oh, you should probably get help for that. I was but like, well, if I'm just going to have to eat anyways, like, why am I going to have to, why do I want someone to like come in and tell me what to do? Exactly. So that's a really challenging position to be in because you want to do the right thing, but you also want to tell everyone to go pound sand and not bother you. True. Like, and there's a, we spoke with somebody on a podcast, Alexis Newman. She does, you know, she speaks with people about, you know, eating disorders and, um, you know, healthy eating and multiple different eating options that you have. You know, so that may be somebody else that I can possibly tap into, too, you know. And, and I think the other thing is, like, being uh, being aware of, you know, your situation or whatever is going on, too. Uh, for the most part, you have to be aware and you have to be willing to want to make change but understand that you do have maybe an issue or a problem. And then it's okay that if you have an issue or a problem as it pertains to whatever it is, uh, but just just being able to identify the issue or the problem and then making a conscious effort to change it. And we know that it won't change necessarily right over, you know, directly overnight. But, you know, you just take the steps. You put one foot in front of the other each day, and then you just step forward and do the best that you can. Yeah. Well, identifying a problem sometimes is only half the battle because I identified my marijuana use as a problem, so I stopped it. 
And then the bigger problem, and in my mind, like, I was having trouble because I was always feeling full. I was like, damn, I was high all the time, so, like, I would just want to eat. And then I would be like, oh, I don't feel good. And be like, yeah. oh, that's because you ate five meals today yeah. and snacked throughout the day. And it's like, oh, damn, that's not good. That's disgusting. Yeah. My bigger problem is that because I stopped smoking marijuana, which sometimes, a lot of times, can be looked at as a stress reliever, the more stress I found myself under when I wasn't using marijuana, the more likely I was to overeat because I was compensating for that lack of... So you're picking it up with something else. So I was doing something yeah. else. Yeah. So like I would just eat. And I'd be like stressed. And then what makes you feel good? The food. Right? Like there are so many things like that yeah. make you feel good. One of them being food. Yeah. Well, that's probably one of the top. Bro, if you eat a good meal... You're going to want a good meal again. You're going to want maybe that same good meal again, but you're going to think about that. Yeah. It's crazy how the things that feel so good to us or for us aren't good, necessarily always good for us, you know? They make you feel good, but it's not, you know, it's not it's not the best thing. And, and it's okay. Like, everything in moderation, right? No matter what it is. Like, if you have it in moderation... It's yeah. fine, but sometimes yeah. the moderation becomes the habit, and then the habit becomes, which, you know, it it's ends too up much. too much. Yeah. So if you're like, oh, maybe I should only have four cookies because that's two servings, and, like, I can do that, and then that becomes the norm. When you want to go a little bit above and beyond, now you're eating six, eight, ten, twelve cookies. Whole sleeve. Twelve. Don't even get me started, bro. A whole, you know, maybe the whole pack of Girl Scout cookies. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a I'm gonna say right now on the record, what are the dosi dos or the peanut butter ones? Uh, I cleaned up. Sure. I've eaten a whole box of those ones. Yeah, easy, easily. Like that's not even a question. Keep the Girl Scout cookies away. Get away from me. Get away from me, <laughs> young lady. You do not know what I'm dealing with. Get away from me. Well, can I just can I just donate can I I'll donate buy for somebody else? Can I just donate the the, the four dollars or the eight dollars of the cookies I was gonna buy? Yeah. Can I just donate it and then you can give them to somebody else? <laughs> when I was smoking, they would be standing outside the dispensary. You come out from buying pot and they're like, "Hey, you know what? How do you say no to that? Right? Like, uh, sure, yeah, give me three boxes." <laughs> but like you're sitting there with your mom and your mom's like, "Ha ha, got you, sucker." <laughs> And you're like, wow, after I smoke this joint, I would really like that sleeve of dosi dos. Man. Yeah. So like that's that's a and then the other thing is uh, we we are currently and and now as we are, are starting to migrate out of what we would call the pandemic of, you know, the we of our lifetime, like yeah. what have we seen that has been as influential in our decision making and our our efforts for ourselves as something like COVID. Yeah. People were stuck at home. Yeah. There was no one showing up at your house being like, hey, um, don't eat too many cookies in there. No one no one knows how many times I I can go to Ralph's. Yeah. I could go to every I could go to every grocery store in my community once a week. And buy whatever you want. Whatever I want. I could buy the same thing at every grocery store in my community once a week. I don't think I have much space in my kitchen for all that stuff, but I could do it. And then if I did that once a week, the people that see me in, in grocery store A aren't keeping track of what I buy in grocery store B. No, that's on you. Yeah. Right. And rightfully so. It's like, oh, well, no one's gonna, like that's on you. Yeah. It's a big responsibility. It's a huge, it's a huge responsibility. And it, like I said, it goes back to the, if you don't have the discipline, you know, and that, and that's tough because like I said, if you, if you think that it's okay, then you're going to do it every single day until you're faced with, you know, the complications or issues, you know, and, or you don't care or you don't, or you don't care. Some people say, oh, whatever, you know, yeah, I'm it, a, it I'm is a, what it is. Yeah. It if is a, this is, uh, you know, this is the type of thing where, you know, I would say, um, Communicating with a professional, with a medical professional, is very important. Um, I think one of the first steps you can make as an individual, especially living with diabetes, is speaking with somebody like a psychologist. Um, if you have a therapist, utilize them. Be honest with them. Talk with them about the things that you think about that you aren't acting on, but you want to know the answer to. How does it make you feel? Yep. 
And then secondly, if you've ever seen or spoken with a nutritionist, then you totally understand the value of having somebody who knows about food go into great detail about how to take it in. Correct. And, and as Brandon and I start uh, part of a study, uh, we're beta testers for a good friend of ours. Shout out to Andrew and the work that he's doing. Um, we're not going to talk about or we can't talk about what exactly it is. Um, but I can tell you that I'm going to be tracking my food for the next six to eight weeks. Like everything I eat. And, and, and I have these notebooks over here next to our desk that in 2016, I did exactly this. For 10 weeks, I tracked everything I ate because I sat with a nutritionist and she said, it's probably out of space. I sat with a nutritionist and she said, I couldn't recommend your diet right now to somebody that didn't live with diabetes, which told me, that I needed to change what I was doing. So I started to track everything, water intake, all my food, how many hours I slept every night, like that was really important. So I would stress if you have an opportunity to do something like tracking your intake and looking at what it is that you're eating, um, do it, do it. And if you can start to go back, one of the most simple things I would say before we let you go today, I appreciate everybody tuning in and, and joining us as we talk about snacking and meals. Uh, one of the most important things I would tell you is if you could, if you could look at what it is that you consume every single day, that's a good place to start. If you work in an office or you have a home office and I, when I was working, I would look at what was in my trash at the end of every day. Yeah. And I would go, whoa, I ate all of that today. Like everything that's in my trash, I ate today. Just being conscious. It's just being conscious, like having a, you know, being conscious of what you're doing all the time. And sometimes it can be tough because you get so, you're so lost in the sauce with everything else that's going on that you don't really pay attention to it. And you kind of just, you know, just, Go through the motions of everything. But I think if you're aware, you're conscious, you're making the the proactive decisions on bringing certain things to work. Because we, we already know, you know, obviously a lot of us have been working at home, which that could be even worse than going to work because now you're around all the things that you purchase from the store. Um, and if you have kids, I'm sure you may snack on the stuff that they eat. Um, so you end up putting yourself... Not in not in the best situation, but it's like controlling what you can control. So when you go to work, at least take those good items or those good snacks to work. But then on top of that, like don't fall into the traps of when work orders like this amazing, delicious food that may not be the best for you. Yeah, you can't regulate what someone's going to bring in and be like, hey, I made cookies at home last yeah. night. And you're like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> like, hey, like, what you talking about? I don't want those. I didn't need those. And they're like, well, I made these. And you're like, wow, I would really like one of those. I, I worked in digital advertising. So the amount of people that were sending food to my office to sway and persuade us to use them as a vendor was astonishing. Easy. Every day there were cupcakes and easy, cookies. Easy advertising. Easy easy way to uh, build an account with a company. It's super easy because who's going to deny right. you know that the, the donuts or the cupcakes or the bagels Don't or say donuts. <laughs> donuts. 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 That that's that's the problem is you can't regulate what someone else is going to do because yeah. they don't know about your dietary habits. For sure. So they don't know what you need as a rate or what you're going to regulate for yourself correct so i show up i'm like brandon i got us donuts and he's like yeah i don't eat donuts he's like but you got them so i feel bad i'm gonna eat a donut i'm gonna eat a, gonna eat a couple Damn. yeah yeah <laughs> no but yeah you're you're right i mean so i don't know this was a good this was this was a good needed conversation yeah this is important talk about it with your friends with your family um the people you spend the most time around make sure they understand what it is that you do to, to take care of yourself um a good place to start is food talk about it over a meal um, talk about it seriously. You know, it's really hard because um, not everybody is as receptive to this information. If you're not affected by anything like diabetes, you don't live with any illnesses, chronic illnesses, autoimmune diseases, and you don't have a need to really worry about any of that stuff. Like that, that's, that's tough. Like that's, 
now you're in a different position. Like you don't really care. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Talk about it. It's important. Um, if you're interested in, in reaching out to Bolus Maximus, please do so. Um, we're always happy to have a conversation. If you're interested in jumping on our podcast, being featured on one of our stories or on our website, please reach out. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to talk again about snacking. Uh, probably bring our, our friend uh, Alexis Newman back and, and get her into the fold here. This is a really important conversation. Um, don't be down on yourself feel positive about what it is that you're doing. And if you feel like you can make an improvement, um, start to work on that improvement. It's important for you to do so. Definitely. Always remember, we live with diabetes, but diabetes doesn't define who we are or what we're capable of doing. That's Brandon A. Denson. My name is Matt Tarrow. We're part of Bolus Maximus. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. That's not on anymore. So I don't know why I did that.